Hello, my name is Julian Edgar, and I'm the author of this book, Vehicle Aerodynamics, Testing, Modification and Development. The topic of today's video, are you interested in amateur race car aerodynamics? Well, here's how to do it effectively. Let's take a look. So most people, and I'd say 99.9% .9 of people, most people's aero modifications are based on three things, guesswork, copying others, or just rules of thumb. And each of those is a really bad way of doing your aerodynamic modification of your amateur race car. Let's start with the first one, guesswork. So guesswork is someone saying things like, I reckon a rear wing placed here will work well. But how do you know? Is the wing in clean air? How have you assessed that? What is the best angle of attack for the wing to give best downforce? And is that wing placement causing front lift, as many wings do? How do you find out? You test with tufts, you test with downforce measurement. Let's take a look at the next one. Copying others. Where someone says something like, everyone runs a rear diffuser without an under tray. Well, do you want to beat the others or do you want to copy the others? Rear diffusers work best as a complete undercar aero package. They are part of that undercar aero package. They're not just this tacked on bit at the back. How do you find out that? You test with pressure measurement. I'll explain some of these techniques in a moment. What about rules of thumb? Here's a classic. The base of the windscreen, the windshield, is a high pressure area aerodynamically, so that's where my engine intake is. But is it the best area? to draw engine air from. How do you find out? You find out by testing, making pressure measurements. So there's three ways that most people actually approach their aerodynamic development, and each of those three ways is fundamentally flawed. It's just really, really poor way of doing things. So what are some of these test techniques I've been talking about? Well, the first one is flow testing with tufts stick little bits of yarn like wool on your car and look at the airflow pattern. Such a powerful way of finding things like separated and attached flow. I talked earlier about is that wing at the correct angle of attack. You can easily use tufting to determine if the wing is stalled or is actually working as a proper wing. Flow testing can also indirectly show where there are low and high aerodynamic pressures and flow testing with tufts can also show airflow direction. Zero cost, really easy, but you must know how to interpret what those tufts are showing you. Tufting makes airflow visible, and that's the very first step in decent aerodynamic design and development. What about aerodynamic pressure testing? You won't find this discussed anywhere except in my book. Measuring aerodynamic pressures allow you to find where they're high and where they're low. In other words, where the air is pushing down on panels or where the air is trying to lift panels up. That helps determine lift and downforce. You can see which panels are actually causing lift and which are causing downforce. And also, if you're interested in chasing lower drag, aerodynamic drag, it lets you find out what panels are causing the most and the least drag. Aero pressure testing makes aerodynamic pressures visible. That and flow testing gives you about 99%, 90% of what you actually need when you are developing aerodynamic modifications. And the final one is directly measure lift and downforce. Don't guess as to what angle the wing should be, simply measure how much lift or downforce is being created on the car. You can measure rear axle lift, you can measure front axle lift, you can measure rear axle downforce, front axle downforce, and you can measure it quite accurately by driving on the road or the track. You can then work out, well, what's the best design of splitter? Just trial a few different ones made out of plywood or any sheet metal. You can measure wing downforce and you can measure it directly. And things like measuring wing downforce are really important because a wing can change undercar airflow as well. And so it might not just be the wing creating downforce, it's the change in flow under the car which can help create downforce. All of this is easy to measure, make lift, make downforce actually visible. 
So you can test and development, not rules of thumb, not guesswork, not copying others. You can test and develop wings, splitters, under trays, spoilers, hood vents, intercooler flow, radiator flow, all of these things can be tested and measured without expensive equipment. You can do that and actually know what you are doing, not just go by those other rules of thumb, guesswork, copying others. So with aero modifications, you don't do any of those because every car is different and what works on one car is likely to be not optimal on another. Measure, test, development, easy, accurate, and can be done on the road or the track. And it's cheap. Under US $200 for everything you need to do the measurements I've been describing in this video. And that price includes the price of the book. And the book shows you how you can do each of these things. You will not find descriptions of how to do these things in any other resource that is available to you. This book is unique in that regard. It's available from Amazon now in your country. It's not a cheap book. It's a big book, full color. But I assure you, the first time you use this book to develop an aerodynamic modification that actually works, you'll have more than saved the price of the book. Thank you.